Hi, this is Sean Chua. Welcome back to SimpleChemConcepts.com. Now, in the previous video, we discussed on the basic concepts of electrolytic cells, and we learned how the cations and the anions in the electrolyte solutions or in the electrolytes are being discharged at the cathode as well as the anode. All right. At the cathode, the cations are being reduced, whereby at the anode, the anions are being oxidized. All right. But we use the word discharge. Uh, to describe both uh, the oxidation and reduction process is much easier, right? So the ions are being discharged at the electrodes, whether at the anodes or at the cathodes. Now, uh, in the previous example, um, the electrolyte that I have was sodium molten chloride, NaCl uh, liquid state. Um, from there, you realize it's a binary ionic compound and there are only two ions uh, inside the electrolyte, the Na plus sodium ion, and Cl minus the chloride ion. So it's quite easy because the Na plus ion will be discharged and the Cl minus ions will be discharged right, at their respective electrodes. Now, what happens if the electrolytes, all right, or the electrolyte have more than one cation and one anion? Then you need to learn something called selective discharge of ions. For example, at um, for the cations, all right. Let's say in the electrolyte solution, you have both Na plus sodium ion and say Mg two plus magnesium, all right, uh, ion. Which one will be selectively discharged? Similarly, for the anions, let's say you have uh, chloride ions Cl minus and you have uh, bromide ions Br minus. Who will be selectively discharged? All right. You can only discharge one cation and one anion each time. Do take note of that, all right? So let's take a look on the board to see how we do selective discharge of ions, all right? Now, over here, selective discharge of ions, as you can see, uh, I separate them into the cations and the anions, all right? So once again, the cations uh, will be discharged at the cathode, whereas anions will be at the anode, all right? And then I kind of uh, draw a line down to split them up. All right, so it's easier for you to see. Now, so uh, let's talk about the cations first. All right, so these positive ions, the cations, uh, will be attracted to the cathode, which is negatively charged. All right. Uh, then what happened over here? Let's say you have all these ions inside there. Who will be selectively discharged? All right. Now, uh, I need to bring you back to something that you learned uh, previously in other topics, probably in the topic of metals or in the topic called acids. It's something called metals reactivity series. All right? So potassium uh, is the most reactive metal. Uh, this gold is the least reactive metal. Obviously, in periodic table, there's a lot of metals inside there, but all chemists or all chemistry students tend to know this series very well, a basic one. And there's some acronym that you can learn. You can check out my blog or my other videos on uh, the acronym for this in order for you to memorize well, all right? Uh, using the English word uh, potassium, right? P, P O T A S S I U M. So uh, then followed by the rest of it, the alphabets of their uh, chemical names. Uh, this is uh, please stop calling me a zebra. Instead, Tell Laura how copper strengthens gold. All right, so that allows me to memorize the sequence of the metals in terms of reactivity series. Do note that hydrogen is not a metal, but we tend to put it inside the series. It's okay. Come yeah. now. So what do we understand about this series? We understand potassium is the most reactive metal. All right, it's the most reactive metal. Gold is so called the least reactive metal what it means is potassium loves to react with acid water or anything can react with to form an ionic compound all right uh, such that the potassium atom become potassium ion all right this means that potassium itself prefers to exist in the ionic state prefer to exist as ions instead of neutral atom Whereby, whereas gold and those elements below here prefer to exist in their atomic state or in terms of atoms, they do not like to exist in the form of ions. All right. So by using this, 
it's quite clear cut that let's say I have gold ion and potassium ion in the electrolyte and in the electrolytic cell once I on the battery the electricity gold ion will be the one that is selectively discharged to form back gold atom because gold don't like to be on this side it loves to be here potassium loves to be in the form of ion so it like to stay here all right so in a way inverted comma right it's not uh, correct to say that we normally wouldn't say that uh, we wouldn't say that uh, potassium is more reactive but in your mind you can find that or you can think that it's more reactive right potassium ion it is more uh sorry potassium ion is less reactive whereas gold ion is more reactive now again don't use the word reactive uh, instead we tend to use the word uh, has a higher ease of discharge so gold ion has a higher ease of discharge than your potassium ion all right so the right here uh, this will be an arrow down so as you go down uh, the cations all right the one at the bottom we have the highest ease of discharge okay so just now i'll give you two examples right i think i was giving you at the start of the video potassium and magnesium let's say you have these two cations in the electrolyte all right of the electrolytic cell so who will be selectively discharged it will be your mg2 plus ions that will be selectively discharged because it has a higher ease of discharge than your sodium ions all right because once again mg2 plus prefer to become mg atom more than sodium ion want to be sodium atom okay i hope this is useful to you so this is your cat ions let's move on to uh, the other side which is your anions now anions uh, there are only two four six usually these are the six that we test you on uh, in terms of your syllabus uh, this is definitely true for the gce o level the ordinary level chemistry uh, in in singapore all right okay so uh, what happened is the same thing the ease of discharge uh, will go down this list so hydroxide ions will be the most reactive all right once again we say it has highest ease of discharge now take note that sulfate and your nitrate ions uh, will not be discharged at all all right so you can actually ignore them whenever you see them in your electrolyte is taken that way all right uh, this is only in tertiary education then we share with you why uh, the reason why they are not discharged you know we just keep it simple we just want to apply and make sure we can do our uh, examination well right so these are the four ions that you have so just now i was giving you the example right uh, what are they is your i think it's maybe chloride and bromide ions if i didn't get it wrong so let's use these two if these are in your electrolyte solution who will be selectively discharged is of uh, discharge series say bromide is having a higher ease of discharge so this will become bromine gas all right so they become a bromine br2 whereby your chloride will be left in the electrolyte itself all right so this is how we use it now uh, something to take note over here uh, which is h plus and oh minus when do we actually consider them all right uh, you consider them when you have an aqueous solution all right so whenever you have an aqueous solution you have to consider h plus and oh minus ions let me shift myself to this side again now what is meaning called aqueous solution uh, aqueous solution means it's a mixture of a substance in water so something dissolved in water right what could they be they could be your salt solution your soluble salt solution it could be your acid solution it could be an alkaline solution right your alkaline alkaline solution all right all this when uh, you look at the salt the acid alkali uh, you also need to look in terms of uh, the water that's present inside here huh? aqueous means there's water so what happened is water in the presence of a soluble salt acid alkali you will tend to partially dissociates you should actually learn this in the topic called acids and bases all right in your syllabus 
it was uh, first described there, uh, regards to this concept, right? So it partially um, ionized or dissociates to form H plus and OH minus ions. They are ions, so they are supposed to be considered for discharge also, all right? So, um, right? So you have H plus and OH minus ions, so uh, you need to then this um, so-called take note of H plus here, Okay, so for example, I give you, uh, say is um, dilute or aqueous sodium chloride solution. So in terms of cations, you need to consider the sodium ion and you need to consider the H+, the hydrogen ions. Who will be discharged preferentially? It should be H+, because it's higher ease of discharge. Alright, so that's for the cation, whereby you have an aqueous solution. Now, what about the anions? This is a bit tricky, so I want everyone to take note over here. Now, if it's a dilute solution, okay, dilute sodium chloride solution, for example, then what happens is that um, dilute means you have less of the solute. So sodium chloride, there's less of it, there's more of the water, all right? So more water also means there's more of the hydroxide ions. So the hydroxide ions will be the one that will be selectively discharged. So we just follow this uh, ease of discharge series. Nothing changed, follow this, OH- minus will be discharged instead of chloride ions uh, in aqueous or dilute sodium chloride solution, right? So let me write a note here, this is dilute solution. Now, example, let me give you one, right? So it's a dilute NaCl aqueous. Now what if it's concentrated sodium chloride solution? Concentrated means there's more of the solute, uh, NaCl, that dissolve in water, all right? So you tend to have a lot more chloride ions, or Cl minus ions, than who? Than your hydroxide ions, all right? So what happens is Cl minus, since it's in higher concentration, it will then be the one that will be selectively discharged, all right? Regardless of the ease of discharge series. By right, it should be OH minus. But just because we have a lot of Cl minus ions, uh, it will be the one that gets preferentially, selectively discharged. So this is when you is concentrated solution. Once again, example, if you have concentrated NaCl solution. All right. So this is where people talk about. Um, um, okay, maybe I write it down as a note that concentration affects the discharge of N ions, your negative ions, everyone over here, right? When it comes to electrolysis process, all right? So once again, this is your selectively discharge of ions. Uh, I hope you find this video useful. And uh, I look forward to seeing you back in the next video where we're going to discuss more on electrolysis. Again, signing off, Sean Chua. Take care and I'll see you back soon.